from the Gospel according to St. Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what the Lord to her, was spoken to her by the Lord. And hear now these words that constitutes what we know as the Magnificat with Mary saying, My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. Let us pray. O come, thou root of Jesse's tree, an ensign of thy people be before the ruler's silent fall, all peoples on thy mercy call. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Amen. This is one of my favorite Sundays of the whole season of Advent. Being something of a mama's boy myself, I find great resonance with the story of the one whom we know as mother of our Lord. A shrinking violet, she was not. I suspect she could handle herself quite well in the St. John's Food Pantry. <laughs> During this season, we find ourselves gravitating toward the, uh, the music of the time. It seems as if everyone uh, creates their own version of a Christmas album. And uh, there are certain songs that, over the years, become part of the regular playlist for all of us. There are cert only certain renditions of certain Christmas songs that we really claim as standard, and you may have your own in your ways that you understand that. And every once in a while, a new song will come up, and uh, over the period of some years, it will be swept into the playlist as an acceptable addition to our ongoing observance of the season. I was reminded of such a song this week uh, when I watched Jordan Smith perform it on The Voice. Uh, and I was reminded of four years ago when at the encouragement of my sons, 
I auditioned for The Voice. Uh, I don't know why the heck I did that. I, I think it was part of that late 40s, life is getting crazy, go do something thing. So I went, and it was quite a scene, and I, if you, it really was quite a thing to observe. And I was living hard with trying to imagine what would I uh, audition with, because you only have a few seconds to make an impression. And me, always wanting to tie meaning to the place I am, and, you know, you're coming to Memphis for an audition to all these Hollywood people. I uh, am not doing Elvis, uh, but I did, I, so I, I did a little Reverend Al Green. They weren't thrilled with it, obviously, but I, at least I felt I represented. So when I see that show and I hear something come out of the mouth of this guy, Jordan Smith, who hails from the Commonwealth of Kentucky, like myself, I do feel some resonance. And he sang, among other things, the song that has become part of many of our Christmas playlists, Mary Did You Know? How many of you have it as a part of your Christmas playlist this season, Mary Did You Know? That your baby boy would, and then on and on and on. Uh, I have the answer to that question. Oh, yes, she did. She absolutely knew. However, we come at the question of Mary. We who are Protestants are very conflicted about whether or not we acknowledge Mary in the slightest, other than being the human being through which Jesus was born. And we scoff at other observances of Mary that seem to have a depth of meaning and spirituality that we haven't really touched or know that we have permission to. You absolutely have permission to. And if you're not, you are really letting some of the best and deepest parts of this season pass you by. What is it then that we know of Mary? That she's full of grace. She is blessed. We hear this, in fact, from her relative Elizabeth, mother of John the Baptist, who gives evidence to the blessing that Mary is, not only by what she is carrying within her, but by her very nature, she is blessed indeed. And Mary is magnificently clear. She knows and she is known. She can go from how can this be to let it be. She sees the realm of God. She knows what justice is. Her song proclaims it. She says, she sings, God's mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown the strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped His servant Israel. She's given birth to nothing yet. She is carrying the Son of God and yet she knows what God's justice is in God's realm looks like. I would wonder if God chose her not because she happened to be available, but precisely because this is the ground out of which Jesus himself would emerge as a boy. Listen to her song sung with great passion and anticipation of Jesus' birth, and hear her boy proclaim in his hometown synagogue only a few chapters later. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That is indeed the Son of the living God, but make no mistake about it, that's Mary's boy too. 
For as much as she is the conduit through which the incarnation is made real, she is the vehicle through which Jesus' theology emerges. While the fruit of her womb is the Son of God, she, he was his mother's son too. Mary, did you know, is a lovely song, but its question is easily answered. Yeah, she knew. She knew. What then do we do with this story? For we bring into our understanding of the story often the question of its historicity. Is it something that happened in the way that you would understand facts from reading the paper or the news as you would watch it? Is it a, is it a story that, that leads itself to my belief in it only by what I know is factually so? And if our reduction of this is only that, we miss so much. Being the lover of the writings of Marcus Borg that I am, I would want to at least draw our attention to consider that there is another meaning to this story in addition to what we may have claimed it over our years. <laughs> And he draws, Borg does, references from the 13th century theologian Meister Eckhart, whose words we've shared many times in worship here, who among his other writings, the very succinct line I find universally true and something to which we must all cling when he says, it is a lie, any talk of God that does not comfort you. Borg reminds us that in one of Eckhart's sermons, he spoke of the virgin birth as something that happens within us. That is, the story of the virgin birth is the story of Christ being born within us through the union of the Spirit of God with the flesh, Borg says. He goes on, ultimately the story of Jesus' birth is not just about the past, but about the internal birth in us, in the present. Could it not be that for us, among the things that we do during this season where we are often tied to the traditions of family and even of worship, that if we have not made room for the promise and prospect that some of the incarnation might happen in us, that the Christ, the Son of God, the living expression in the world of who God is, is not a part of our living of this season, then we really do keep what could be at arm's length. The question for us, it seems to me, is whether there is room for you, for me, to have the Spirit of God abide in us. And that the reality of Christ alive in us is manifest through us. expressed most powerfully in living out the ways of her grand song, the Magnificat. If it is not lived out in the words of her boy in his hometown synagogue, that the gift of the Christ is not just for me and mine to feel good about who I am, but to challenge and confront everything 
that I think must be so. And to challenge a world and systems that have so leveraged that which we call spiritual to their own advantage that even Christianity has become commodity and not the true gift that changes the world. She knew. And she was strong. She let it be. May we do the same wherever that takes us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.